introducing the panelists right now. Um, I introduce myself, Mary McCoskey, Minnesota Music Coalition volunteer, board member, not a musician, love music. Um, so Vicki is a MMC member, singer, songwriter. She's on the charts and three different charts for her um, album. And her, um, her recent single on the charts is The Reckoning. And um, she has been doing interesting live streaming from different locations throughout her uh, quarantine space. So she will be sharing her insights on that. Joe Flip, is Joe here? Hey, Joe, hi, nice to meet you. Um, Joe's an award-winning musician. He is local, um, receiving international radio play and recognition for his many talents. Um, he is a performer. He has also been making handcrafted oil can guitars, which David Ostrom has been talking about for months. So it's kind of nice. To, there is one. Hey, cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and he teaches music. So he started a program called Blues for Kids, and he's teaching that through an organization called Discover Music. So that is very awesome. Um, Steve Call is another panelist. Steve? Steve? Hello. Are you there? Am I coming through there? Hello? Yep. See hey. ya. Great. And Steve is the owner and producer at Wild Sound. He is a big MMC supporter. Wild Sound has been an MMC friend for a long time. Thank you, Steve. Um, you and he is a, um, where did I put that now? Uh, he's been doing audio engineering and he's been a guitarist, songwriter, and performer for over 25 years. So we will get Steve's audio expertise for this live streaming crazy. Um, and Mike B, is it Bieren Bach? Where's Mike? I'm over here. Bieren Bach, is Mike <laughs> B down there? Is it Bieren Bach or do you go by Mike B? Uh, Bieren Bach, Mike B is what I go by though, yeah. Okay, so Mike, in honor of you, I'm drinking out of my First Avenue mug this morning because oh, <laughs> I miss it so bad. Um, so Mike B is the house recording engineer at First Ave. And he's also a musician, songwriter, sound engineer. And um, he's got his own studio, the Rice Street Circus Studio. And he has his own YouTube show, um, The Cellar, which features live music and band interviews. So check out The Cellar on you, um, in The Cellar um, on YouTube. So I'm gonna shut up, let you guys talk. Joe, do you wanna start us out with a overview of live streaming and what do we need to do mm -hmm. if we wanna start? Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Joe. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I, I'm a you know, musician like, like most people. I, I was a, a full-time musician for the last six years until, uh, you know, until the COVID-19 came up. Um, but yeah, I think what, what, I, what I've been noticing is that, um, you know, obviously the, everyone's doing the live streaming now. So, and, and then, um, so, I think a lot of the common questions are how do we get better sound, better audio, better video. But I, th I think an even more um, uh, important question is how, do you, how can you be more strategic or offer more value or, or be different than everyone else that's live streaming? At first, it felt like everyone was just live streaming from their couch, pretty much in their pajamas, you know, which is cool. But if you, know, if you turn on Facebook, if you're a music fan or, or a musician, everyone's live streaming. How can you get engagement for more than a couple seconds before you move on to the next person. So I think um, really looking at your brand and your art, you, whether you do covers or originals, um, you know, look at your brand and, and your art and what, what do you want to offer that's more in that niche and offer more value, um, you know, um, as, as far as focusing on that. I, I think some of the, the, real, the real quick uh, Basics. What I've been noticing is a lot of people have been having really spotty Wi-Fi signals, which can, which again can really um, hurt your your image online when you're doing live streaming. So, what I've what I've been encouraging people is always to get a direct uh, internet signal to your phone or to your computer. So I, I found these little adapters. Like this is a, I use an iPhone, so I bought this little adapter that goes right up to your your phone. And then you have another adapter that goes to your ethernet cable. And then this goes to your power. That way you can get a, a straight internet signal um, from your phone, which helps 
all that, all that, uh, the quality of the signal. Um, and then, you know, Mike B um, is obviously the um, sound engineer, uh, sound guy. Um, he's been doing a lot of cool stuff working with like those more advanced live streaming where you can plug in your, you know, mixer right to your um, digital interface. So I'm sure he'll talk about a lot about that too. So I think there's a lot of different options out there for live streaming. I think the biggest thing is get the direct internet signal, be more creative, um, focus more on your art and your brand. So that, those are kind of the first tips I would uh, suggest. All right, um, Vicki? Yeah. How do you Thank feel about you. chiming in about what you've got going on? And what can you uh, share? Well, earlier in the year, I went to a couple conferences, which turned out to be pretty handy because all they talked about was live streaming <laughs> and how you need to be going live all the time. And at the moment that I heard this, I thought, well, that sounds terrible. And now here we are. So <laughs> um, what, I, what I took away from, from a lot of the panels on, at the conferences that I went to is uh, to, to go elaborate what Joe said is to be, you know, to pick a time and then stick with it. Uh, and also I feel like musicians, this is intimidating. It's a learning curve for everybody. If the first time that you pick, it doesn't work. Like I was trying to do something on Fridays at seven and I, I'm, I'm now homeschooling essentially my kids. And at, I'll tell you after a full week of that, that seven o'clock is not happening for me. So I picked, I'm gonna do um, two things. One on the regular is a Sunday supper, which I had started before all this went down. And that's where I cook and, and I play some songs in my kitchen and take a little request. And then now because of COVID-19, we've uh, added on, uh, we're going to do a charity. So anybody who tips me or they can do, do, uh, donate directly, we're going to try to help somebody. Um, so that's my thing on Sunday suppers. It's, um, I like to say it's like Mr. Rogers with Chardonnay. So it's really a fun, uh, fun thing. I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, and then um, I'm doing a Tuesday and Thursday with um, Annie Fitzgerald on Instagram Live because you can pop into another person's video there. And then we share songs back and forth like a, like a song circle. And that's been really, really fun. We call ourselves the lunch ladies. So, and now we're trying to host guests on Thursdays. So if people wanna join on in with that, they can let me know. So we'll host somebody and we sing a few songs. Um, uh, the other thing is like, I think now that we're all doing the, the live streaming is that it's like how, like Joe said, like, how do you, how do you make it better experience? Because as people are scrolling through, how, how do you get them to stick around a little bit longer? Um, when this first started, I felt like my fans didn't, they could have cared less what the sound was like because they wanted more of a connection instead of perfection. But I, the performer in me wants to make it a better experience. So I'm, you know, I'm also trying to experiment with uh, capturing that live sound better. So about sound, Steve, can you speak a little bit to how, how they can get better sound from home right now? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. I see. Am I coming through Hi. there? Yeah. All right, great. Um, thanks for doing this, by the way. It's really important. We all have to get through this somehow. And all of our clients, all of the artists are in the same boat. Um, there are no performances available. I, I want to echo something that Joel said before I talk about the technical. Um, I think that creating content that's compelling is even more important now to differentiate yourself from all the casual stuff that's going on. It's, it's a lot of fun to share that sort of blase-faire, here I am in my pajamas thing. But uh, it's really important to give your best performance, I think, just like you would on stage. Um, really make it something. Make it mean something. And people will stick around. Uh, also, you know, you want to pay attention a little bit, even if you just use your phone, to the lighting, your setting, and, uh, and then what type of room you're recording in. Right now, I'm in a fairly live room. You can hear some echoes. If you want uh, a more controlled sound, you want a carpeted room with draperies and so on uh, to cut down on the reflections. So uh, just as you would in a studio. Uh, so basically, um, I just want to cover 
the essentials in case someone hasn't live streamed and doesn't know what you need. Yeah. But you, you know, you, obviously you need a camera and microphone. Your phone is the best vehicle right now to, to learn how to do it. You need a video encoder, something that creates a codec that can be streamed. Then you need a, a destination, somewhere you're going to put this live stream like YouTube or Facebook. And then fourth, as Joel said, you need a heavy duty internet connection, something that won't drop data that will uh, let you have a really uh, a good quality stream. Because if you upgrade your audio and video, you're going to need uh, a better stream for your data. Uh, one easy way to upgrade your audio is to use a USB microphone like the Blue Yeti. Uh, I think Rode makes one as well. They're about $200. So this is maybe not the time to invest a lot of money. Musicians aren't really having much income, but if you can, you know, increase your uh, audio through, you know, upgrading your microphone and also increase your video quality by upgrading your camera. Uh, there's a, a camera, the Logitech Brio is right around $200. It does 4K. So it's going to improve your, your visual as well. These can both be plugged into a laptop or a desktop. They're USB powered, so they're easy, um, easy improvements to make if you have a couple hundred bucks. Um, if you wanna go even further with it, you're gonna to have to make a pretty substantial investment in gear. So you have to weigh that. Uh, if you're going to be using a, a pro camera a lot, it might be worth doing. If you're going to do a lot of video shots, maybe you wanna invest in a Canon Vixia, but it's $2,000. <laughs> so, you know, to go to that pro level and to have a, a U87, for two thousand dollars, is uh, it's a serious investment. So I think to be smart, you can, you know, use kind of consumer off-the-shelf stuff and really actually improve your your sound and your visual for not too much money. Um, you know, it's all in what you want to do, really. And I think right now to get out in front of as many people as possible with that great content, you know, use what you have. Obviously. You'd like to make income from these things eventually. There are ways to, to monetize a show, but really it's gonna have to be pretty special to get people to, to donate or to pay to see your show. Um, so you're gonna have to really pull out all the stops and that's all on you. It's, it's, it's gonna take a lot of effort to do that. So um, I hope that wasn't too much information all at once, but. No, it was good. It went from 101 right up to a graduate level there at the end. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, these are the questions we've been getting is what is the equipment people need? And um, one of the questions was which platforms are best? Because you know, if you've used different platforms, you know, panelists, if you have something to pipe in, what, what platforms have you preferred? I know um, Vicki was talking about Instagram and um, there's different, different ways to go. Mary, I'm going to pipe in first by saying this uh, and adding a layer to what Steve said. And that is for a lot of folks, the tiniest part of the pipeline of what you're trying to push out from your home performing platform to the world, <clears throat> excuse me, is the connection from your computer to the world. And so uh, you might want to consider uh, it's a cheap fix is installing an ethernet cable, a cat five cable that'll go directly from your computer and, and circumvent your Wi-Fi. Because if you're routing your computer through your Wi-Fi, all the other Wi-Fi devices, you know, in your house are sharing that. And uh, it, it, it constricts the pipeline. So the ethernet cable is gonna plug directly into your, into your, uh, not your Wi-Fi router, you know, directly into your modem. So that's the pipeline that goes right to the internet. And it's a cheap fix, you know, a piece of cabling like that is a matter of a few dollars. And you might need a little dongle that, that goes from your USB port to the ethernet connector. Again, that's very minimal in terms of cost. You can pick that up at Circuit City or online. But at any rate, that's, that's all I wanted to say is that then, then you're circumventing all that Wi-Fi. The kids can still play their games, you know, and do all the crap. Everybody can do all their crap in the house while you're doing your thing and 
and uh, it keeps that pipeline nice and big and, and probably more wide open than you've ever had before from your computer to to the world. And so all that signal and that video and everything can push through in a real time fashion that won't be constricted by that by that slice of the Wi-Fi that you would other by, otherwise be using. That's what I had to say. I got something to add to that, which is uh, it, it's also on the user end. Uh, so the client end also has issues, and that's where I've had a few issues. Is uh, we've been streaming out, but we've been streaming out at a really high quality video and a really high quality audio, which is great because I've got the hard line to the uh, to the router. But the clients on the other end, anybody who's got slow Wi-Fi, if they're if they don't have unlimited high speed data or something like that, uh, they ended up getting scrambled audio. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of people coming on going, "Hey, my." audio sounds like crap and I'm, I'm running a great system here and it sounds like it sounds great to everybody else so uh, you might have to remind your audience to turn down their end uh, to literally turn down the video quality so that they get the better audio because you're or you know vice versa if you're working in a video format uh, you know focus on the thing that's important if you're working in art then focus on the video right and make sure that the video sounds great and you might compromise a little bit on the audio. On the other end, you might uh, might do the opposite if you're working with audio and say, you know what, I don't care if it looks a little stuttery or smeary here and there, but I want the audio to sound great. Good point. Um, we've got a question in the chat section. Um, it's plug mixer into gig- digital interface, question mark. That is a... Um, that was a high level statement and we're a one-on-one level. Can anyone explain what plug mixer into digital interface means? Uh, I, it's probably for me, it might be here. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm here to kind of talk about a little more about the high end end of this uh, because there's value. I think, I don't remember who was discussing it, but there's value to retaining your, your viewers and retaining your viewers is, uh, is, difficult to do if you don't keep it looking good and sounding good. Uh, so there's what I do is I plug my mixer into my uh, computer so that I get the audio from my mixer as opposed to, and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I get the audio from my mixer so I can put in effects. I can EQ things. I can make things sound really good and then send it to the computer. Uh, it doesn't cost a fortune, but it costs more than your typical you know, just, I want to quick do a stream. So it's something you got to decide whether you want to put that kind of production into your production because yeah. uh, it, it costs money and you got to be able to make money to make it worthwhile. But my experience is that a high quality stream retains the people uh, so much better. Like you can set up a phone and that's great. And I'm, I'm not knocking that at all. And if that's what you got, then that's what you go with, but use what's at your disposal too. A lot of these musicians have, digital interfaces uh and my suggestion would be to use them uh i i literally take the analog audio out of my console and run it into the analog audio in on my computer uh when in this situation because a lot of programs won't recognize that you've got this complicated digital mixer hooked up so it can be as simple as that uh you literally you can take something i brought one over here as well This is just a cheap little mixer. It's got a, a four channels and a little bit of effects, but it's enough to do an acoustic guitar and a couple of microphones or whatever. Uh, and you can actually mix your sound as opposed to putting up just one microphone in the room and doing with what you got, which is usually boomy and whatever, uh, gives you some options and it's not expensive. And every mixer has an analog out because that's what they do. So. All right. Um, Back to the platform question, does anyone have, you know, between Instagram and, um, was it at Patreon? I know there's different programs people are using and some of them have a way to tip or, or pay for a performance while you're watching the performance. Um, has anyone, have anyone of our panelists familiar with those and do you have a favorite? Again, uh, I've done a couple of streams out of the studio here that have been really successful. Uh, my experience again is you gotta keep people entertain because people aren't going to pay for one song they're going to show up and if they're entertained by one song they're going to stick around if they stick around long enough they're going to feel like they should probably pay something uh i've got a couple of things to say to that one is use put up every kind of payment method you can because nobody's going to sign up for venmo just to tip you ten dollars if they already have venmo 
they might tip you ten dollars <laughs> so uh my my uh, experience is throw up all the different kinds you can so th especially the big ones paypal venmo google pay uh and facebook messenger probably amazon pay uh maybe square cash or something like that because uh a lot of people have one or two different ways to pay, but they don't have five or six. So if you throw up, the more you throw up, the better off you are. Um, we have another question. Um, that is a pretty good one. It's how to live stream from your desktop computer to Facebook. That is, um, has anyone live streamed on Facebook yet? What was your experience? I hate to hog the sound here, but I've done that as well. That's where, where we've been uh, sending out our streams. Uh, Facebook, how to, how to live stream. I use OBS. Uh, and again, there's, there's a lot of different ways to go about this. OBS, which is Open Broadcaster Software, is a free uh, software that is very professional. You can put up graphics. You can uh, adjust your audio. You can play MP3s. You can play videos. You can do anything you want. And you can edit it all on the fly. It's, it's uh, available at obsproject.com. And if you want to make a very professional looking live stream, my suggestion would be to go with a desktop or a, a solid laptop, a good uh, laptop, and run a, something like OBS to, uh, to make your stream look more professional and, again, keep your viewers. OBS. And, Thank you. Um, Mike, uh, to comment on that, because I, I've been researching that as well. Um, I think for most people, most people know, you know, you can take your phone, do a live stream from Facebook and it's just pretty, you know, click and play. Um, but I think what you're talking about, Mike, is it's, it's, I call it the more advanced system where you go to, maybe we should try to find the hyperlink and, and put that Facebook link um, there where you can download, it has the instructions where to download OBS and um, basically if, if, you, you'll be able to explain it better than I can, but it's basically a platform where you could, you know, you could you could have different cameras set up, like different phones set up. You could uh, have stills and videos pre-programmed, and then you could you could hook up your digital interface, your mixer into your digital interface. And I think I, I think that's the main only way how to do live streaming with a mixer, which a lot of musicians are asking, how do I use my mixer? How do I use my digital interface? Do you want to elaborate on that, Mike? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm using my mixer right now for the for what we're listening to. So, uh, again, what I'm going to tell you is the analog audio out of the back of the mixer is the same as a microphone audio. It's going to come out at line level instead of mic level, so that's something to keep in mind. But you can plug that into anywhere. I can plug this into my phone uh, with the right adapter, right? So I adapt from the output of my console to whatever the input is on my phone and I can be running my mixer on my phone. So uh, that's the simple way to do it, as opposed to trying to hook up digitally. Uh, I also have a USB connection, right? And I could run this audio over a USB connection, but a lot of people won't have those options. So you can always just simplify it down to, I could take this mixer again, this little inexpensive Euro rack mixer, and I could uh, run it down to my phone if I needed to. And then, when, so if you, if you take that directly to your phone, so you're saying analog. So is that like those, uh, those what is it, the yellow, white, red? Um, and then you have, is that the adapter? Do you have some kind of converter that goes into your phone? Uh, yeah, actually, I'll, take, I'll, I'll get a look here while other people are talking, and I'll see if I can show you some of the adapters that might help you. Cool. I think another thing I, um, I've been playing around with, I'm sure Steve and Mike might have seen these, but um, these are these little smaller, like, Rode boom microphones. Um, I, you, I think that you can use them for like digital cameras, but this one has a lightning port on there. So you can plug it right into your phone. So when you do your live streaming, it, it has a, it's a basically like a little boom mic. So, it, so I think these are like 50 or 75 bucks, but you can get other ones with a little three and a half millimeter jack that goes into your, your phone. I think these have been working decent for me so far, but I think the issue is like any micro, like when you with with your internal iPhone, it's all it's I, I feel like it's always compressing and kind of normalizing, which is kind of a good thing. Um, but I think when you use like an external microphone that that doesn't have a gain structure on there, 
if your if your music is too loud and dynamic, it could clip. Or if it's if it's if you're talking, if it's really quiet, it's obviously going to be quieter. Um, have you if it's, has anyone ever used like little external microphones like that before? I I have Joe, but not for the for the musical aspect for. Uh for live podcasting and, and it'll I'll confirm what you said, you know, that, that the softs are softer and the and the highs can can clip because it's a it's a it's a more direct pathway for that audio to go in rather than the internal stuff from the phone. But they work great. They they do. They're wonderful. You just have to be wary of their peculiarities. Yeah, and I I think I think the more I think about it, it's like we're talking about the live streaming, you can have really good audio and video and make sure you get the direct internet signal, which is huge. But then again, like um, Mike was saying, sometimes if it's too high quality live, at least, you know, I think maybe you could, maybe one person could focus on having maybe not the best audio or quality for a live thing um, to have that bandwidth better for the end user. And then, but then maybe make a pre-recorded video with, with better quality audio, video, microphones, and then put that up on YouTube or Facebook as a, is a non-live video might be a good strategy too. That's another area where OBS can come in really handy because uh, OBS can record at the same time. So you can record separate tracks of audio and uh, cameras and what's not, and then go back and edit it uh, after the fact. So you can stream it live while you're recording it and then go back and edit it and, uh, and post it back up later. Hey, Mike, get that, it. Oh. That, that OBS stuff, is that available for both uh, operating systems, you know, for a Mac and for, and for Windows? Yeah, it's my understanding that it is. I think Joe actually knows uh, better about the Mac. I use a Windows system, and it was designed on a Windows system, but they have a Mac version, or is it that you run it in a shell, Joe? I don't remember exactly how that works. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's just a straight up OBS system that's available for Mac as well. So I'm using a Mac, and I've been playing around with it a little bit, um, and it's kind of nice because like like you know you can you can kind of pre, you can almost make pre presets um, as far as like I want to make a video and stream it live to YouTube, or now I want to make another video and stream it stream it to my Facebook account or Instagram. So you can kind of preset your social media accounts that way. Um, and, and again, it's nice. You can have stills in there. You could hook up your phone to your laptop. If you have another camera, so now you have two or three multiple cameras, and you can switch them on the fly. Or if you have a, if you have someone like like Mike, Mike was doing that with um, Mark Joseph, musician. Um, if you get a chance to look at that video that Mike uh, was helping him with, it's really cool because they incorporated different camera angles. They had still shots. They had little like almost promo you know, commercials of the, of the artist. So you can get really strategic with it, you know. But that's something I wanted to speak to too, is uh, that OBS then allows you to put in graphics and stuff. And I'm, I'm, I think people react a lot better to being, uh, to listening to the music and just seeing a graphic occasionally that says, here's where you can pay, as opposed to the musician constantly having to stop and schlep that, hey, I'm, I, you can get me on PayPal and, and you know, you've put up a graphic where people can easily go, okay, I can read that. I know how to pay. They're not stopping the music. The entertainment just rolls and that graphic comes up every once in a while. You know, every once in a while, the, the musician might, uh, might throw out, hey, you know, check out these graphics and, and, you know, throw me a tip if you feel obliged or whatever. But uh, it keeps the musician from having to be a salesman while they're out there doing their show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one question we got was, will there, will there be a training on um, OSB from us? So the answer to that is, um, I don't know. But when we, David um, Ostrom, our staff guy, will be posting either um, tomorrow or Monday a follow-up about this, and he will include some links to that program. And if he can find a tutorial, he'll include that link as well. So keep your eye on MMC for the next couple of days in social media, and we will throw some links out for a training on that. And um, I would we'll jump in just, just for a moment. I would yeah. jump in with, uh, you know, if you want some more training on specific technical things like OBS, uh, YouTube tutorials are all over the place. Uh, that'll lead you through how to use YouTube, how to use Facebook, how to do these things. And uh, that's a really good place to go. 
probably the best really because they they walk you right through it you know how it is anything any question you've got is somewhere on on youtube and uh they walk you right through it they'll show you how to do the fanciest fancy you can with a program like that you can make it look like a professional newscast you can i mean you can really put together a great program or you can go simple and just run one or two cameras and and keep it really simple and it's uh there's so many tutorials on uh, youtube that are really good on how to run that program and that's a free program right it is yeah it's totally awesome. free. It's uh, open source program so people are constantly improving it that is perfect I mean. for yeah. our uh our membership right this minute free is good um so vicky could you talk a little bit about platforms and which ones you've used and which ones you've liked and well, I, yeah, I've been doing a lot with Facebook Live, and I think that a lot of people wind up there because that's where all the eyeballs are. You know, I mean, you can really reach a lot of people in a short period of time on Facebook currently. Um, it's not my favorite place to be, but it's where I kind of needed to start. I do like Instagram a lot. I do, what I really love is the ability to request to be part of somebody's live stream on Instagram. That is really, really fun. And I encourage people to experiment with that. Um, the other thing that you can do with Facebook that I've figured out too, is that uh, let's say um, you want to build a playlist on YouTube, like with that Sunday supper idea that I have people, some people that follow me um, that have even given to my Patreon are like, I hate, I, do, I deleted Facebook and I'm not putting it back on my phone for you. Okay. So um, <laughs> you can save those videos at, at, on your computer and then upload them and you can put a graphic and you can, you can make it as a little bit nicer than what it currently is and, um, and upload it to to YouTube and then you can develop a little series, which I have found that some, some of my folks really love. Um, I'm, on my list is to to look at the restream and um, I haven't done that yet. So restream is a way for you to go from to Twitch, which I also haven't used much, but they've, they've got some pretty cool things that they're doing over there where you can play with other people at the same time. There's not that weird delay that there is on Instagram. Um, and then you can go from restream, you can do YouTube, Twitch, and there's another one um, at the same time. I would, uh, somebody who did it last night and I thought she did a really great job was Jillian Ray. So I was talking with her and with her husband about it because um, they had some little technical difficulties at the beginning, but they, I think there are a lot of things that came together for them at the end. So um, I would go check hers out. Cool. Um, question about Instagram Live. How did you learn how to do that? Did you watch a tutorial on that too? Like, or was it easy to get up and running? Uh, it's very easy. It's very easy. Um, I saw it done live at a conference that I went to. I was down in, at the Folk Alliance conference in New Orleans and they were all about all this stuff. So, um, and it, so I would start the Instagram live and then you would hit request to be in Vicky's video and you do that and then all of a sudden I'm on the top part of the screen and you're on the bottom. So you can choose who joins you. Yeah. Okay. So I could host like us, I could even host a song circle like with an or a, a little night where people are coming in and singing one song each as they, they they come in, they sing, then they leave. You know, all these I mean I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um one question, excuse me, another question we've had is how to monetize mm -hmm. live streaming. Um, how, how to get tipped, how to get paid. Um, are you, have you had any success with that? What have you done? Is that for me? Yeah, that's for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my Facebook Live video or uh, shows are the ones that make the most money um, that I've done more of like a house concert type style. But then my audio, like that's where I've been. It's like, first of all, I'm too tired to do it on Friday night. So I'm going to figure out something else. But um, the audio too is that after a couple of them, I'm like, I need to really work on this, you know, whereas, um, and so, but people were very generous and I did not have, I didn't have a graphic. I, I, I was really casual about it. And, um, but I did put it in the, the post initial post to all my options for people to tip and people were very very generous and a lot of people bought merch and then uh, i i had a few people become patreons because of it and the patreon thing is like that's a weird um 
it's a weird time to be kind of launching that. Uh, but also I heard over and over again that there are a lot of people that would actually prefer to support you that way. And I, I feel like you don't have to push it, but you might want to consider just having it as an option on your website or when you're promoting your shows. Um, Cause there's a, a huge contingency of uh, fans and music lovers that prefer to help you sustain your career that way. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Um, any of our other panelists have platforms that they have preferred or have you monetized live streaming? I think uh, Vicky mentioned a good good comment that you know um, we 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 personally may or prefer may or may not prefer so, so certain socials, and then our fans are the same way too. But um, I think it's always a good thing, and once you do your video, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or alternate them, is take that video and just put it on your YouTube page just to add more content. Because I feel like some people may or may not use certain socials, socials, but a lot of people use YouTube and plus YouTube is, set, is, is really a search engine. So if you keep adding that content on there, it's going to help with your content, your SEO. Uh, you'll, you'll have more people. I feel like more people find me from across the world on YouTube just organically or by mistake, just because of the SEOs or algorithms. But I feel like more of my local followers are like on Facebook because they've been following me for a while. But I think it's always good to take your content and, put it on YouTube um, after, it's, after you already went through the process of making that stuff, um, especially if it's a cool collaboration thing, like, like th those are such cool um, things that are, are more different, more unique, um, and it's just, it's just such a cool thing. So I think always throwing it on YouTube is, is always big too. I know somebody already touched on this, but uh, Restream, which is a, a service, Restream.io mm -hmm. is a great service because you can stream to all kinds of platforms all at once. So you can put it on your YouTube and your Facebook and Twitch and you know all of them and stream it all at once. I think it allows three clients for free. So you can choose your top three. And then if you wanted to do five or six different platforms at the same time, then you end up having to pay for it. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, three would probably cover the vast majority of your, your people who are interested. So. Um, another question we have is about lighting. Um, <laughs> lighting is a tricky question because if you're lit from above, I mean, if I'm lit from above, I'm going to look more like a witch than I do in real life. So how do you go about um, coming up with decent lighting when you are at home in lockdown and you can't go rent anything and you can't go buy anything? There you have it, panelists. You lost me that can't go rent or buy anything. <laughs> I know. I need, I need 101 level here. It's actually a decent investment if you're going to do something like this. I'm looking right now into a $30 camera. All of the cameras in my studio are $30 a piece. I got five of them. So, you know, one camera is not an expensive uh, thing to get into. And it does 1080p. So it's, it's as good as any of the people who are streaming you are gonna be pulling it down anyways because very few people are pulling 4K videos out and most people honestly probably don't wanna be viewed in 4K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've noticed that, you know, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm definitely no, not a photographer or video person, but, but obviously it doesn't matter what you see in real life, it depends on what, what, what they see in the screen. So what, what I do is I kinda of get everything pre-programmed like right before I hit publish and I'll have it in selfie mode on my tripod and I'll keep looking at myself through that selfie mode um, in that right before I hit publish so I can see what the lighting looks like. So like normally if I'm at a gig, I'll put my lighting here and in my face, but if I see it in the camera lens, I'm like in the cell phone, it just looks way too abrasive. So I really need to tweak. I have my little stage lights, but then obviously you can get those little LED lights that are designed for photography or videography. I bought some cheaper ones like that that will have a little bit of a, a white light on me. But then again, if it's too bright and it, it, it really depends on what it looks like from your phone before you hit the publish button. Yeah, so here's an example of uh, one of my cameras. This is a Logitech C615. You can get it down at Best Buy. You can get it on the net about $30. And uh, when you do that, you also have some adjustability because it comes with a program that allows you to adjust brightness, allows you to zoom in, you know, do a couple of different things that 
you can't normally just, uh, well, I guess you can do with your cell phone, but you know, this makes it a little, a little easier. Plus it's remote. You can mount it on a tripod easily, things like that. So. Vicki, what do you do for lighting at your house? Uh, I actually found a couple uh, little like almost like reading lamps that I that I had that have been sitting in my kids rooms not being used that provided some really nice lighting that I did on Friday night. I had several people be like, you look good, Vicki. I was like, so I didn't look so good before. So that's good to know. <laughs> but uh, time of day is also a thing. Like if you're doing, you know, lunch hour concerts, you know, that natural light is going to look good on you. You know, that as the day goes on in the darker and the shadows, then you need to brighten it up. And sometimes, you know, finding the, the nice warm lighting that goes with also like your skin tone and what kind of makeup you're wearing for, for women and that kind of thing too. So all of the, I think what uh, Joe said about the, uh, take a look at what you look like in the selfie is uh, smart. But um, another, I have a question for the panel. Like, let's say, let's say you get your mixer all hooked up. You get some software that's going to allow you to stream to a couple different platforms. How do you know it sounds any good? Is there a way to sound check it? I do. Uh, how do you I, do it? I, I pre-record it is how I do it. So, uh, in OBS, I use OBS, so I, I'll rec pre-record it and then I'll give a listen back to it and make sure that it sounds right. Uh, another thing to do is to just watch your levels. Most of these programs have little meters that show you how loud the volume is. And if you see that bouncing up into the red, uh, you probably want to turn it down a little bit. But keep in mind, you want it loud enough because that's a big complaint people have is that they have to jack up the volume on their device so high that, and they still can't really hear you. Right. So watching those meters is really important uh, if you want good sound quality and you want it in the yellow most of the time and occasionally bouncing into the red but never ever peeking out so uh, that if, if you're getting good sound to your program uh, then as long as you maintain that you should get good sound out to your clients so then when you decide to go live you're actually uploading a video of your pre-recorded nope. Nope, I pre-record it first a little bit and then make sure that everything sounds good and then I go live, yeah. I got you. Okay, thanks, Mike. That was a good answer. And so, sometimes for me, I, I've, just, I've just actually used my, my actual phone video camera and I'll record my, you know, a video of myself playing it just as a video and listen back to it and see how the levels, if I'm just using my internal microphone. microphone. Um, a question for you, Mike, um, or uh, there was a question on the chat here. Um, they were asking when you, when you use OBS for Facebook live streaming, um, can you see the comments? Um, you know, where, or I guess where do you see the comments? Ah, on the OBS? great question. You actually you need to open up Facebook and look <laughs> because that's how you see the comments. So, uh, when you're using OBS, uh, there's tutorials that'll walk you through this. But uh, part of that is you have to log into Facebook, get a stream key. And then you put that into OBS. And when you do, your Facebook page will say you're ready to go live and it'll wait for you to, to hit a button to go live. Uh, so. All right. Another question we had was, um, does anyone know about licensing for live streams? I'd like to play some covers. And Joe answered on here, he thinks it's fine. I'm wondering if our entertainment attorney is still on and could speak to that. Hello, is he still on here? He may not be. Anybody else know about the licensing with live streaming? Can you uh, just- I'm not an attorney, but I believe that Facebook pays licensing for live performance. So you can go ahead and, and do covers on Facebook. I think YouTube does the same, but it has to be a live performance. You can't, uh, you can't play somebody else's pre-recorded music. Okay. Sorry, Mary, I was on mute multitasking. Okay. Um, this is Tony Mendoza, our, our entertainment attorney, MMC board member. Hi, Tony. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, you can play covers. It's actually something that was covered under the new Music Modernization Act. Now all of the streaming services are paying compulsory licenses. I'm not sure exactly how the details of that worked out in terms of the license terms, but it's just uh, now going to work like ASCAP and BMI. Um, where the streaming services essentially pay this blanket license fee um, to a new nonprofit governing agency that'll 
operates some, similar to, to ASCAP and BMI. So you can play the covers and you can rest assured that the songwriters eventually will get compensated for the public performance um, that you are presenting on your, your stream service. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Tony. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything we have not touched on yet for live streaming 101? You know, like I, to add. Go ahead. Well, I have heard of some, some platforms where they include the um, tipping and how to pay right in. Is that Patreon or what is that? Maybe that's not the right name of it, but it's a program where you can like tip and pay while you're watching the show. Are you guys familiar with that at all? Okay, maybe I made that up. I'd love to hear about it though, because I think that's a great idea if you had something that uh, would allow people to just like throw in a dollar or two dollars and then later throw in another dollar or whatever. Yep, I know it exists. If you know about it out there in the world, please chat it over in the, in the chat link, Twitch. Twitch has a tip Twitch jar. Has a tip jar. Yeah. Awesome. And stage it. Stage it Thank is you. a really interesting platform too. I, I could see that being used as more um, like if, if you had a show that you uh, was special to you, um, like you were celebrating a birthday of one of your albums, or if you had a new album that's coming out and you can't do your CD release stage it, you can actually um, uh, charge a cover charge and the splits not, terrible um but the things that i've watched over there uh look and sound pretty good and i felt like the platform is 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 pretty is pretty cool i'm excited to try try something over there when i have something to celebrate so that's with. essentially a paywall then so you you pay to see the whole show kind of like you would going into a club yeah they've done a bunch of festivals over there um they did one i think two weekends ago and it was really, it was really cool. They had different performers coming up every 20 minutes, like flipping through from their houses. And then you paid like a cover charge and you got to see all these amazing people play. It was really neat. Vicki, I have a question for you. Um, Cause I, I know I've, I've heard that when people do the Instagram uh, where you bring someone in live, I've heard that the latency is, is, is decent where you, you can kind of jam together. Um, Cause that's, that's another question everyone's asking is how can we collaborate live? Could, do we use Jam Kazam? Do you use, you know, all these other places, but I've always heard that the latency is kind of an issue. Um, obviously you want a direct internet signal from ethernet, but how was your experience working with Instagram or other resources doing like a live collaborative jam? Well, I saw a lot of Instagram uh, live things go wrong with that in terms of the, the delay is a, is a problem, especially like for somebody like when I put, play with Annie Fitzgerald, if we're going to harmonize together, it either has to be dead on or it's not happening. You know, you can't do that. So um, I have heard that Twitch uh, is, has some uh, ability to do that. I haven't experimented with it, but it's definitely on my, on my list. So. So when you, so when you did Instagram, was it, was it just, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it, it was somewhat close enough to jam? No, we didn't even try it. We did more of like a song, song swapping. Mm, so okay. like I would start and then she sang a song we talked a little bit so it's more of like a song circle idea oh that's lots well, that's a really good idea when you can't have that exact you know timing there right and 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 it's also it's it's fun to interact with your uh I mean we were supposed to go on a tour here in April so it's nice to just interact with her in that way and then uh we we're adding special guests now which is is really fun and has like this very um I don't know, sort of more of a spontaneous energy. And that's, I think that complements uh, the more planned out and more elaborate sound setup, you know, to have something like that on Instagram. People love that too. Yeah. I don't, is, it, is it possible to do that on Facebook as well, where you can bring someone on live at the same time? Or is that just Instagram? I, from what I've heard and what I've learned, the answer to that is no. Right now, Instagram has kind of got that cornered um in terms of on their live there, there is something similar through facebook which is you can have a watch party and yes watch party you can activate your camera so that your camera comes up as well along uh with whatever it is that you're watching together 
And that is something to encourage your people that are tuning into your show to start their own watch party because then it goes into their feeds and then other people can start watch parties. And it just is, I've noticed that when I started asking people to do that, my numbers went up dramatically. Yeah, the, the watch party is great. I would, I always, when I'm doing something out of my studio, I start a watch party and then I've got six, eight of my friends in there hanging out and they're making comments in the watch party that aren't yeah. part of the other thing. So, you know, it's kind of a, it's almost like going to a show together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think all that stuff helps build the algorithms too in real time when people are commenting, liking, sharing, like all that stuff just builds it up. And then even after the fact, when it's, when it's after, after it's live, like Mike was saying, when he did that uh, live show for uh, Mark Joseph, I, I put the link in the comments there, you know, after, after it's live, you'll get more, you get more tips, more comments, more shares and everything. All right. There was a question about, um, there's one about, you know, can you get your bandmates in different locations all together with like this Brady Bunch screen thing we have going on in Zoom and play together? But maybe that won't work live. <laughs> it sounds like that just won't work live. Um, but there's latency issues. Yeah. And especially with music, you know, with a commentary thing, like what we've got going on here, it's not such a big deal because there's yeah. a half second that, you know, but when it comes to the rhythms and whatnot with music, it's, it's an issue. It is a little tricky. There is some software called Source Connect and uh, musicians can get together there and there's, there's a lot less latency, but I'm not certain if you can then live stream the product of that session. But it's I worth checking out. Have, Check out Source Connect. Source Connect. Connect. Thank Sorry, you. With OBS, you would be able to uh, live stream that out because anything you can put on your, t your uh, screen, you can put on OBS. That might be worth checking out. There's another interesting piece of software called Loopback, and it allows a variety of uh, inputs. Like, let's say people are Facebooking in, Skyping in, calling in, and you can use Loopback to combine these and then stream that. So I, again, I don't know about the latency with that. Haven't tried, you know, jamming on it, but it's, it's really interesting if you want to bring people together. I would also want to touch on something about monetization. Um, obviously musicians all want to make a little dough. We can't go out and play. So we're performing online, but there are also other ways to, to make money using your music. You can, if you're into teaching, I don't know if there are any instructors out there, but doing Skype lessons, if you haven't thought of it, most instructors are doing Skype lessons right now. All the professional instructors at the schools are using this to uh, continue their lessons and even expand their student base because you know there are tons of people sitting at home who want to learn how to play the guitar, the bass, and whatnot. So I would encourage people who maybe don't think of themselves as teachers, reach out to some people and see if they're interested in starting lessons because you have a lot of skills you've developed over the years, playing an instrument, singing and performing, and uh, you can share those things. And maybe you can even make a few bucks. Um, it's worth thinking about. I have another comment on that Zoom thing. So <clears throat> I have a, I've had some musician friends that had um, like a radio, interview um, slash performance. So the, the DJ said, hey, let's just do it on Zoom. Let's just have our, our live interview and then we'll do a performance and we'll put it, we'll put that audio and video like on the radio or on the website. Um, so I, I recommended that they put their mixer into their digital interface and then into Zoom. But even though they, even though they did all that, uh, it's still, the, the guitar for some reason still sounded really, really bad. I think it's because Zoom is, is mainly designed for talking that it ha I think, it, yeah, and I think it has all these automatic compressions and things. And there, we found some options where you could take those off, but even still with a mixer into a digital interface into Zoom, it's still, for some reason, it made the guitar sound all weird sounding. So there's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky. So yeah, I think maybe the OBS system might be a better bet. All right, well guys, it's 12 o'clock. Um, holy cow, that was a whole hour and it went so fast. Um, I think that is it. Does anyone have any last questions that we need answered while we have these brains sitting in front of us really quick? 
I would encourage everybody to uh, keep helping and, you know, because we're all in this together. So I know that the Music Coalition has a Facebook group um, and there's other, you know, groups where everyone's kind of helping each other out. But I, I would encourage everybody to go to that group or, or some other groups and keep the, the conversation going, questions and, and answers. So that way we can all help each other out. Yeah, there's been a lot of link sharing just over in the chat section on here. So um, thank you for that, guys. How do we, ch can we save the chat section? Because I want to keep all that information. Do we know how to do that, anybody? Oh, that is such an advanced question. I was sort of taking screenshots of the things. Maybe I'll go through before I sign out and just download all the links, I, think, I guess. Uh, Mary, if you go down to the chat, there's like three little dots and you click on that, it could say save chat. And I bet you can then just save that file and send it to everybody. Oh. I can't see. Hey, Mary, so, you're look here? at you being all technically <laughs> oh, smart go. and crap. Okay. <laughs> Mary, while you're, while you're answering that question, I also just want to encourage everyone, if you have ideas for other webinars, um, things you want to know, panels you think would be cool to put together, please send those to us because um, we plan to do a lot more of these in the, in the near future. And thanks to the Music Coalition for doing this. I think the Music Coalition is by far the most helpful organization out of all the ones I've seen that as far as posting resources, grants, um, yeah. everything possible, um, you know, worldwide. So, so thanks to you guys for, for doing all this. I think, I think it's, you guys are really coming through and really helping musicians when, when they need it the most. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you guys. Um, next Friday, we're trying to do these every Friday and we're trying to have them open, not just to members, but to everybody. But next Friday's topic is gonna be wellness for musicians, um, different ways that we can keep our heads together during this time. So that'll be a good one. It'll be next Friday. We'll be posting about that shortly and we'll have a follow-up to this one. We're also gonna, we're recording this one. We'll put it up on YouTube. So you can find it again and you can kind of fast forward and reverse to find the information that you wanted to find and pull that up. So I bid you all adieu. Thank you so much for coming today. This was, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. It went so fast. Thank you. Thank you, panelists. Love you.